Spooky season has just begun, and to honor it, I put my normal TBR on hold. Instead, I took your suggestions, put them in a bracket, sent them to the battlefield, and left the winners up to you. I spent an entire year building up a bookstagram audience for this video. It was all so they could vote on my October TBR. That was the only reason. There is no other reason. There were a couple books that looked super interesting that you all put on the chopping block, so just know I'm watching. That's right, Santa came early. Don't laugh. I can see you, you nasty romanticy readers. Do not laugh. Just because I have Akatar, Fourth Wing, A Touch of Darkness, and and you know what? Don't look at my bookshelf. It misrepresents me. We ended up with a pretty good mix of cozy, spooky, and classic, so let's dive into it. We started off the vote with Kingdom of the Wicked and Starling House. These are both books I've seen displayed in Barnes & Noble multiple times, and I've heard a bunch of positive reviews. Kingdom of the Wicked is a young adult witchy romanticy, which are all words I adore, and Starling House appears to be spookier. Horror, gothic, still romance, but, but think spooky dooky. I don't know why I said that word. Now don't tell anybody this, but I'm not a horror fan. I don't like the genre. So despite its gorgeous cover, I was quite happy when you voted it out of the running. Cheers to you, Kingdom of the Wicked. Now it's time to get vampire-y. And no, it is not Twilight. I'm actually yet to read or watch Twilight. That is partially because I've heard people say that the writing is awful, and partially because I want my future lady to force me to watch it. Make it a romantic moment. Ah, yes, isn't this, isn't, isn't this romantic? The Shadows Between Us and Empire of the Vampire. All I know about The Shadows Between Us is it has a very pretty sprayed edge version that I almost bought at Barnes & Noble, but I didn't because I was scared of my card getting rejected in public. As for Empire the Vampire, I have heard it is legendary. I've had multiple people in my DMs tell me to read it. And not only that, but this paranormal dark fantasy has an amazing cover and awesome end pages. But that doesn't matter. Not one bit. Because you chose the shadows between us. And now I have to read a... What is it? I need to look at the Goodreads. Let me see. Uh, woo the Shadow King, marry him, kill him, and take his kingdom for herself. Okay, so I am now learning that not only did I assume there were vampires involved, there do not appear to be vampires involved. But it does say young adult fantasy. As much as I want to be angry about this pick, I, I can't. It's just not possible. And why would I fight joy? Joy is a beautiful thing. I'm a sucker for romance. What one can't get in real life, they seek out in fiction. That's actually the same reason I read Natural Bust Enlargement with Total Mind Power. Yep, that's, that's a book. I actually found this while looking at the stupidest books on Goodreads, and it has a shocking amount of male reviews considering the topic. I also did not read it. It is now time for your cozy intermission. Pumpkin Spice Cafe versus The Spell Shop. They both seem like wonderful cozy romances, and I am a bit partial to the fantasy one, but it turns out when you make videos on Bookstagram, you attract the romance girlies. And what could they love more than cozy romance novels? Let's not talk about that for both of our sakes. Contemporary wins! The House Witch and Masters of Death. I think this calls for a cloak. Now, my dear viewer, I don't have a black cloak or a witchy cloak, but I do have this totally not scary linen one that's kind of reminiscent of a Jedi. Fit check, how do we feel? Expect show, like, and subscribe. The House Witch looks really good. It's a cozy mystery with romance and witches, obviously. And Masters of Death's vampire real estate pitch just couldn't compete. I'm sorry, Olivier Blake fans. I'll uh, do my best to read Atlas 6 soon to make up for it. This next battle was a tough one. For the coldest girl in Cold Town. Good Girl's Guide to Murder blew it out of the water and it wasn't even funny. It was just kind of sad. I would have thought Holly Black would have put up more of a fight, but you guys must really, really like A-G-G-G. A-G-G-G. A Good Girl's Guide to... A G G G T M. That acronym is giving me a migraine. I'm still very curious about the coldest girl in Cold Town. I mean, I'm a massive Cruel Prince fan. Holly Black's great. But for today, Holly Jackson takes the victory. Lost Boy versus Gothy Connor. I think I need to bring back my other outfit. I actually hadn't heard of both of these books. And I don't really think it was a fair competition, considering one is a Peter Pan retelling and the other was an erotic gothic dark romance. I'm sorry, Captain Hook. You never stood a chance. The Haunting of Hill House versus Murder on the Orient Express. Not exactly sure how I feel about this high neck collar, but I'm going to leave it as so. These are classics. I actually know nothing about them and have read neither of them. I very, very, very much hope that none of you watching are classic book connoisseurs. I read a concerning amount of young adult and spicy novels. To you, that must be like comparing Immortals Henry Cavill to Argyle Henry Cavill. But luckily in my eyes, it's more like comparing Throne of Glass book one to Air of Fire. The new stuff is so much better. And also every Henry Cavill's amazing. Don't sleep on my boy. And we don't talk about Argyle. That never happened. Anyways, Orient Express one. I was kind of more curious about The Haunting of Hill House because it feels like I've heard of that book before. I don't know from where and when, but The Haunting of Hill House rings a bell. Maybe it was a show or something recently. I could Google that, but I'm not going to. Now, this next part is going to make everything I just said sound stupid and pointless, but fuck it. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde versus Dracula. 
Dracula. That was like my dun 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 for Dracula. Everybody knows Dracula. I actually am a pretty big fan of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The first time I read it, I was playing Mario Kart alone in my room, had my headphones on, and was listening to the audiobook. Dracula, however, I have never read, and it seems like the universe knew that. I'm not allowed to enjoy vampire fiction until I read the first, or the second, I guess. We can't forget about Camilla. That is one scary woman. Dracula wins, and I have a surprise for you. You may think this is over, but it's not. I missed the chair. They are going back to war. I will refrain from making a perfectly timed political joke. As I'm sure you remember, Starling House lost and the shadows between us was the second tower. Kingdom of the Wicked is unbeatable. They just can't do it. You guys are incredibly down bad for dark romance. Even if it's young adult, it doesn't have to be new adult. As long as it's dark romance, you want it. It's like it's part of your DNA. It's in your blood. I am concerned. I also enjoy it, but don't snitch. Don't tell anybody. Now, I do know I just did a whole thing about dark romance, but Gothicana went into round two at a huge disadvantage. You do not fuck with the true crime girlies. Good Girl's Guide to Murder obliterated the competition again. You can't blame me for improperly seeding these books. It's not my fault some of them were more popular than other ones. Instead of blaming me, blame the authors for just being too good at their job. Oh, and by the way, I'm not going to watch the Good Girl's Guide to murder tv show and pretend i read the book i heard the show is very bad you can correct me if i'm wrong that's just what i've heard i do like the actress isn't she the one who was in wednesday i was kind of a wednesday fan i'm excited for season two the house witch and pumpkin spice cafe talk about close and they're honestly both super interesting to me on one hand i already love fantasy and on the other hand i really want to get into contemporary if i can get into contemporary books my tbr will triple in size which i guess isn't really a good thing though technically since i already don't read it i think adding more is not going to do much and our Victor is Pumpkin Spice Cafe. This might shock you, but I have never read a cozy contemporary romance. This is going to be my very first one. I really, really hope it's good. Please set a good tone for my future Pumpkin Spice Cafe. Now that Pumpkin Spice won, does that mean I have to go to Starbucks and get a latte on my way to Barnes & Noble? If so, can we make a deal? Can I instead listen to Love Story by Taylor Swift on repeat while driving there? One, I like that song. Two, I'm trying to save money starting today. The classics are back. And honestly, this coat does not look that bad with this outfit. Dracula versus the Orient Express. The winner is... A tie? Well, shit, what do I do now? Why are you all so indecisive? Being indecisive is my job. That's why you're choosing my TBR. I guess I could flip a coin. I could do rock, paper, scissors with Henry. Rock, paper, scissors. I feel like this isn't getting me anywhere. Maybe I can call someone and have them choose. Hello? I have a question. I need you. I need to choose something for me. Excuse. I so I'm recording a video. I I wasn't expecting one of the things to be a tie. It, it's between the book Dracula and the book mm -hmm. Murder on the Orient Express. Murder on the Express. Really? Thing. Fine, Dracula. Well, that's not, that's, that's not what I meant when I said really. <laughs> have you have you read or seen either of those? <laughs> no. What makes you choose Orient over Dracula? I'm just curious. Now I'm just curious. Well, because Dracula is cool in vampires, and it's like it's like a good classic like murder yeah that that checks out <laughs> i guess we're reading murder on the orient express i cannot say i'm disappointed from what i've heard dracula is told from the perspective of letters it's like a guy who's visiting dracula and then writing letters out i don't really know i'm not super interested i might listen to the audiobook at some point but it's like pretty long it's like 400 500 pages this is the page count and if i'm wrong just slowly zoom in on my face and just make me look stupid it's nothing new to me, to be honest. Orient Express it is, but that's not all. That's right. I have a plot twist. There's another book. I'm actually the host of a book club and they voted One Dark Window for October's read. And I already have both, so I'm locked in and ready. It's hard to go wrong with romanticy. That being said, I have tried reading this once before and I didn't get that far, maybe like 50 pages in. So I am a little bit nervous, but I do think the whole spooky atmosphere of the season, just the timing, the vibes, I think that's gonna help me get through it. I like the covers and I like the concept. It feels pretty unique. I'm really hoping this is another Cruel Prince situation for me. I DNF'd The Cruel Prince and then three months later tried again and ran through the entire series. It is now one of my favorites. Here we are. I wish I could be cool and just stare at the camera and recite this list, but I can't. This October, I'm reading Kingdom of the Wicked, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, The Pumpkin Spice Cafe, Murder on the Orient Express, and One Dark Window. Leave a comment and tell me which books you think should have won, or tell me about some other spooky season reads that I might be able to sneak into my TBR secretly. I'm actually intending on doing a video series for A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. That'll be over on my bookstagram, so stay tuned for that. Those will probably go up alongside the Queen of Shadows videos I'm doing. And if you're in the mood for some entertaining, spooky, icky, creepy vibes, check out my Twitch live streams. This entire month, I have a bunch of scary game streams planned. Think Markiplier, but significantly worse in every possible way. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Deuces.